Hello, my name is Shane Grammer, and thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. As you can see, I'm going to paint a jungle ruin tree. And towards the end, you will see treasure that I'll put inside of the tree and, and a bit of a storyline of um, why I created this uh, miniature model. I'm going to start out, you can see color on there. It's, this is wet brushing. Um, and it's wet brushing because I have three different colors that I'm using. Uh, the first one is this winter green. Very cheap paint. You can buy them at Walmart, Michaels, all kinds of different places. Christmas green is my medium. And I've got a darker color that I believe is hunter green. And that will pop up here in a second. You can use any kinds of greens. I typically like uh, a lighter base color because I feel like it gives it a pop uh, as I'm wet brushing a medium and a dark shade into that. Also throughout the video I've got different stages that I'm going to go through and I'm going to slow down the first few minutes so that you can actually see it and then I'll speed up the rest of the process. So that, that slow video footage you just apply all the way around the whole of the project for each each stage. You know, I, I really do, I, I get impatient, but I, I do love this, this, this part of it, you know, where you're throwing the paint. But you can see I, I threw a darker color in there because I know mentally ahead of time that this inside of the tree is gonna be burnt out and uh, really dark. But I'm getting those three colors and I'm just wet brushing them in filling in all the cracks. I'm not worried about getting color on the rocks. You can see it's a lighter tone, that's the base color. And then I'm using the medium and I'm wet brushing it into that base color. And then at the very deep areas where the undercuts of the roots and the deep cracks, that's where I take that hunter green, a really dark color, get it into the deep spots and then just kind of wet brush it into the wet paint, into the other colors. Heat gun, I, I know, I keep put, I'll, I'll put the heat gun probably four or five times throughout um, this. And so now I'm, I'm s slowing down the video. I have already wet brushed the whole tree and, and dried it out. So now I'm going in with the hunter green. And, I, and you, can, you can tell that I'm going to all the really deep spots and then I'm fading it up into the tree. Um, I always, you know, I always have water. I like to kind of keep my paints wet. Um, it helps transition it better into the existing paintwork. And I always keep a little rag with me that's wet. Just keep it always wet. And because, you know, if you make mistakes, it's really easy. You can just take that rag and just simply wipe it right away. And almost like I'm paint brushing as I'm brushing up or down into the sculpture. Same thing with the rag. Just treat it as a as a uh, paintbrush. The footage will speed up here pretty soon. Um, please always comment um, with uh, questions. You know, I, I tried to put all the products I used. I, again, I like, I tend to use mostly cheaper products, paints, and it, even the clay. The clay is super sculpty. You can buy it at Hobby, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Dick Blick online. Um, I'm going to do some videos here in the future of actually doing the sculpture. Um, I do these miniature models pretty darn quick. Um, this is to scale, so it's at one inch scale. And I would typically for a client do a sketch and then if I had the time I would do a model like this because it gives you the 3D form it's at scale and then when we go fabricate it I could just give this to guys you know in the shop and say okay here it is to scale and we could start doing the steel armature and all the appropriate you know phases that go along with it so I speed it up because I'm just going all the way around with that darker color Heat gun time. You need a heat gun. You can get heat guns for 30 bucks at Home Depot, Walmart, all those different places. If 
Okay, so after I've burnt in all the darker hunter green, this is brushing in the highlights. And I I like calling it dry brush because you don't want your brush super wet this time. You want to keep this is more of a bristly brush. Um, because I'm wanting to hit the highlights because in this sculpture you have highs and lows. That darker hunter green went in all the lows to pull out that detail. And now I'm, I'm dry brushing just that, that bright highlight or that base color that I started out with and I'm just hitting all the highs. And you can see how it, the highs bring up the highs but they also bring out the lows. One thing I've seen with a lot of sculpture and three-dimensional work is people could paint it wrong, you know, as in lose the 3D because they paint it all in one color and then they might just age the cracks and it just, it loses that beautiful 3D. You, you want to accent the 3D that you worked so hard to sculpt. So I'm just going to go all the way around hitting all the highs. See, I'm using my finger a lot um, because sometimes uh, it gets on there too much and I, I just kind of brush it off with my finger or a rag. So now I'm going back and cleaning up the rock. But um, one thing is I like to encourage people is don't worry about the green that came from the tree onto the rock because in reality that rock will be it will be really aged and there will be some green on there. I'll explain that a little bit more. Now this part's fun and this part is usually scary for a lot of people. Especially when you do this on a set that's 40 feet wide um, and you're using Hudson sprayers and big squirt bottles. So I've got a needle nose with a be watered down um, kind of a, 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 it's got red in the brown definitely I'm, I'm not sure what color it is sorry I don't have that you could if you really need to know just message me or you know give me a comment and then I'll look that up and, and respond but what this is is I'm just going in I'm just pouring this color and allowing it to go into all the cracks and all the deep areas and I want it watery and my paintbrush is really watery because I'm just kind of fading it out. You know, I don't want those drips to stain, uh, you know, lines. I don't want lines to stain, but I, I want to feather it. You can see how it's kind of feathering. Now this is the brown stage, and then there's going to be another stage where I'm using black. And I'm going to use it a little bit more. Oh yeah, that looks cool. I love watching this actually myself. But see how that brown gives a more natural kind of a burn to this whole model? Yeah, and I, I did lay down a, um, a rag because you, you need something to soak it up as you're, you're uh, pouring all that uh, watery paint. So now I'm doing the black. Um, one thing to think about is when you're when you're doing the black and the black staining is you could do it multiple stages. It might take a couple layers, uh, and wh what that means is you do an initial layer, and you let it dry, and then you go in and you punch. What I call punching is hitting really details. So I. Um, you know the paint's dripping down and you can see it's pretty strong in all the cracks um, and I'm speeding it up I probably should have slowed it down but I'm going in and I'm ragging and I've still got a wet brush same thing applies you know as I was putting all the aging colors on the tree you, know, you don't want those really hard lines but you got to wipe it down and uh, brush it out with a uh, brush wet brush the other thing too is encourage I encourage people all the time is just practice. You can practice on half of it and redo it. Eat guns save lives. <laughs> okay, dry brushing highlights. So I'm doing the same dry brushing on the rock work now. 
and you can see I'm really barely touching that stone and I've got a wet rag pretty close to me probably in my other hand and but see how beautiful that looks you're getting you're getting highs mediums and lows the really deep cracks are your lows and your medium is that kind of gray brownish gray that you see and then the highlights just you're I'm going back to the base color and then I'm just dry brushing just barely hitting the very highs and that's what I call getting sexy it looks awesome speed up the video here soon. I hope you like my ambient music in the background. So I'm going to, the same thing is going to apply all the way around the whole perimeter of the miniature model. Oh, I just love those cracks. I love how those cracks pop out. Now cracks, that's something you're going to go back uh, and constantly do like after all this this stage dries I'll go back in and I'll punch and I'll punch the really deep areas that are under the roots and really make them dark so it draws your eye to that you know, dark space and now I'm doing the close-up details so I'm focusing on the deep areas and the cracks Okay, this is a fun part. So basically everything is painted and now I'm painting in some glue, some tacky glue. And I have a picture of the tacky glue coming up later in the video. I like this glue, super cheap. I mean, you could get eight ounces for two bucks and it'll last a long time. And I've, I've, I've put glue on a piece of cardboard down below and I've mixed water into it just to kind of break it down a little bit. You can even use Elmer's glue. Um, but the main thing is you just want to make sure your glue is tacky to hold the foliage, the moss, uh, but also dry clear. That's very important. So I am just anticipating where I want all the moss to go. And uh, then I poured I, this is kind of a light moss. I'm not sure exactly what the name is. That's another one of those things that send me a comment, but you can get all types. This could be a grass. There's different thicknesses. It's all on what you want. Um, I could have taken this model further with more moss and made vines and all that kind of stuff, but I had to get on other videos. Um, but I took this foliage. I put it on that lid. That's what that red thing is there just so I can control it and have something I can take around the whole model with me. But I just pinch it, pinch it, and let it fall into the cracks. And sometimes I'll brush it into the cracks. So I'm just getting glue on all those areas. By the time you get all the way around the model where you originally started, it's, it's dry. This is a fun part. I really enjoy this this part. And also, when you do this a lot, um, when you make models or actually fabricate things like this in real life, um, you start to know ahead of time where you, you might see an issue or a crack or a hole or something that um, maybe wasn't painted to finish. But you know ahead of time you're going to put moss there. Yeah, so you, it's forgiving. You can hide issues, you can hide mistakes, and things like that, because it's really kind of a layering process. And uh, the video will speed up, but I, again, I wanted to give you slow, real time, so you really understand that. I, I get so frustrated. I love watching how-to videos all the time but when they speed through the whole thing and you can't really see what they're doing it's it's frustrating there's a science to the moss um, I'm not really following the science so you hardcore model makers you know you could get mad at me but you know, Disney folks you know they know that um, they know where the, sh the shadow the shade is and you know where the north side or the west side you know where there's gonna be more more moss or not so 
but I'm not getting crazy with that. So this part's gonna be fun. I'm adding the treasure and I'm using the same tacky glue. There it is right there, really cheap stuff. Again, with the treasure, I'm not being hardcore. You'll see by the end that um, there's the beads that I've used. Those aren't the, the right colors, but that's the brand. I got it at uh, Michael's or Walmart. And I'm putting glue all over the beads and then I'm wetting it down because I know it's gonna dry clear. And it's just kind of a filler. This gold is a filler. I'm putting more on top strategically because I want them to be really bright. I want that gold glare. And I'm already starting to put on a few jewels. And what I've done is I just go to craft stores and I find necklaces and different type of jewelry that I like or beads and color choices that I want. And then I just start putting them all together. Now you can get totally hardcore. If this was for a client, I mean, I could buy diamonds and add diamonds in there. You could buy little doll pieces of candlesticks. And, um, and now I'm kind of going into my highlight treasure pieces. Highlight means focal points, so it shows details. And because all the filament is just, it's a layer, you know, it's the bottom layer. It's not very important. It just supports the highlight pieces. And this is where I could have came in with candlesticks and all kinds of stuff. But I, I like this serves the purpose and it looks cool. That one piece that I put in there is broken off of a necklace. To me, it kind of looks Aztec a little bit. And you can go in there and highlight it. You can paint all these things as well. I'm going in now probably because I'm trying to hide the holes of the big beads. So I'm going to take a little bead and put it over that hole. And it just kind of creates a beautiful little illusion of uh, realistic treasure. You know, there's many ways you could do this. You could sculpt the treasure. Um, I even toyed around with sculpting little coins and making a mold and making my own coins, but that's a lot of work. So I'm burning the edges now of the tree because my story, as I talked about in the beginning, is simply that this was like a uh, tree that this dragon, you know, this ancient dragon, took over this area. He got the treasure and burn out this whole land, this whole area. And this tree is kind of a remnant of uh, something that he burnt out and threw his treasure, you know, part of his treasures in that tree. That's kind of my storyline behind it, my thought. I could have had treasure spill out all over the rocks. I just kind of wanted to keep it focal, focal and focused inside the tree. Again, this is my interpretation. I always like to say that. Everyone loves to do their own you know, thing. This is the turnaround. So you can see the whole piece. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to start making more videos like this. And leave comments. Let me know what you'd like to see.